ready to Will you be enlisted as a volunteer? A volunteer for Jesus, a soldier true. Welcome to Answer the Call, the radio ministry of Heritage Baptist Church and Pastor Curtis McMiller. You know, folks, back in the 1740s, America was in a spiritual crisis over freedom, and pastors on horseback were preaching revival to every city and hamlet across our land. The Christian settlers answered the call, defeated a tyrant, and became the America we know. Today we have a tyrant of our own making, the invisible tyrant of unbelief. And once again, our pastors are raising the alarm, encouraging us to fight against this enemy we can't see. Here's Pastor McMiller to show us how to once again answer the call. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, say ye. Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God had given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Hello, friends, and welcome once again to another edition of the Answer the Call broadcast. Thank you so much for inviting us into your home this evening. Now that we've crossed over into 2023, many of you have made new commitments. You've set new goals. You have purposed to move forward in your accomplishments from last year. You've decided that you want to be more effective this year for the cause of Christ than you were in the previous year. Now, beloved, it's time for you to move forward. This evening, I want us to entertain the thought of the art of the start. The art of the start. And I call your attention to Acts chapter 27. Turn with me there, please, if you would. At this particular point in Acts 27, Paul, as a prisoner, is being transported to Rome. In what would be his final destination before seeing his Savior face to face. And though Paul would be put in a position to give warning of the possibility of shipwreck due to the potential storm on the horizon, the crew neglected to take heed to his warning. I want you to note this with me in verse number 10 and verse number 11 of our text. Look here in Acts 27, verse 10 and 11. The Bible says, And said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the landing and ship, but also of our own lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Let me interject here in this portion of God's word. Though the crew, according to Paul's warning, would suffer loss, the ship would be destroyed. However, the crew, the prisoners, and Paul himself would reach their destination, though some on broken pieces. That's given to us in verse 43 and 44. Now then, let me begin this lesson by saying, first and foremost, if you are going to master the art of the start, there must be a starting point. You have to have a place where you began. Here in Acts chapter 27, look at verse number 1 and 2 of our text. The Bible says, And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one 
Julius, a centurion of August, Augustus band. And in verse two, the Bible says, and entering into a ship of Adramidium, we launched. Notice the two words, we launched. Hey friend, you cannot finish if you don't start. You cannot master the art of the start if you don't have a starting point. In many churches tonight, people are saying, I'm going to make a new start when the conditions are right. I'm going to move forward in my decision to be obedient to the Lord when everything falls in place. Can I say this to you, my friend? Everything will never fall into place. The Bible says here that we launched. In other words, these individuals were willing to go forward. And friend, if you position yourself so that you can be victorious this year, 2023, don't say that we're going to start tomorrow. You need to say that I need to start right now. Don't wait until tomorrow. Start now. You say, I'll pray tomorrow. No, friend, you need to pray tonight. Don't say, I'll read my Bible tomorrow. No, friend, you need to read your Bible tonight. Don't say, I'll give up that sin tomorrow. No, friend, you need to give it up tonight. Why not start reading the Bible? Why not start doing what you know is right to do and what's necessary to do tonight? The Bible says in verse 2, and they launched, or we launched, that is, they started. So we see first and foremost, if you're going to master the order of the start, there must be a starting point. Number two, expect immediate trouble to follow. Expect immediate trouble to follow. You'll note here in Acts chapter 27, look at verse number four. Paul said, and when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus because the winds were contrary. The winds were contrary. Listen, my friend, as soon as you launch out, as soon as you start, you can expect problems. You can expect trouble to come your way. Now, these problems, these troubles, these contrary winds may come in the form of three different venues. It may come in the form of friends. The Bible tells us over there in John chapter 21, verse 3, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, we also go with thee. Of course, here, Simon Peter was used, if you will, as a means of disparaging, discouraging the disciples from going forward, from experiencing the art of the start. But then secondly, it may come in the form of family members. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 14, verse 20, and another said, I have married a wife. And therefore, I cannot come. The context there involves one who had thrown a tremendous meal, prepared a tremendous supper, and has set his servant out to locate individuals to join in the feast. And here one gives excuse concerning his wife, a family member. But then thirdly, the form of preventing you from going forward, preventing you from being successful may come in the form of just past failures, failures hindering you from experiencing the art of the start, things that were carried over from last year. Can I remind you, put all those things behind. You must move forward for God. Expect trouble immediately. When Nehemiah launched out to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, he was faced with a double barrel problem. One came in the form of Samballat, the other in the form of Tobiah, the Ammonite, there in Nehemiah chapter 2, 
verse 10. When Joseph launched out to accept his responsibility over Potiphar's household, immediately he faced trouble from Potiphar's wife. That's given to us in Genesis 39, 7 and 8. When Esther launched out to become queen, we understand that her people, the Jewish people, faced immediate possibility of total annihilation. That's given to us in Esther chapter 3, verse 8 through 11. You see, my friends, when you launch out, when you move forward, when you seek to invest and move in the arena of mastering the art of the start. You can expect trouble immediately. You set out to live for God, expect trouble. You set out to help in a Sunday school class to teach the word of God, expect immediate trouble. You set out to win souls, you can expect trouble. You set out in love to correct a Christian who's going in the wrong direction. Expect the devil to cause trouble. You see, when you launch out, you can expect winds, contrary winds, to arise. When you launch out, expect the winds of adversary to strike. Expect the winds of gossip to strike. Expect the winds of discouragement to strike. What am I saying? Simply put, I am saying if you never do anything for God, you will experience little trouble. But if you expect to follow through, to do something big for God, to launch out in the new year, you can expect trouble immediately. Listen, friend, I'd rather get involved in service for the king and do something for God. I expect trouble in doing something for God. But if I sit around on my hands and I say to myself that I will just go through life another year expecting to do nothing or to fulfilling the same thing I fulfilled last year, can I say this to you? You will miss out on God's blessings for your life. Can I remind you as a follower of the Lamb, Paul said, but watch thou in all things endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. We need to get busy for God. And know this. God tells us, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. What about it, my friend? Will you respond to the call of God? Will you take on this new year with new vigor, new energy? Will you be willing to master the art of the start. Will you answer the call?